the film is a parody of Thor, you'd expect something like this to be on Pornhub. Hey guys, how's it going? And today I'm going to share my opinion on Thor Love and Thunder. Let's crack on with the review. So after the events of Avengers Endgame, I've been really looking forward to seeing Thor's next outing. I've always been a fan of the Thunder God and his amazing powers. I absolutely loved his side quest in Avengers Infinity War where he had to forge Stormbreaker from a star. You know, the axe that would eventually cut off Thanos' head. It was a perfect change of mood from the previous film that he was in, Thor Ragnarok. You know, directed by Taika Waititi. It took on more of a comedy approach mixed with action and it worked it worked really well i did enjoy ragnarok a lot so i was really looking forward to thor love and thunder because it was also going to be directed by taika waititi i've seen previous films of his jojo rabbit yes it's a comedy slash drama based on events of world war ii but when it gets serious that film really hits the emotional side of things a very good film if you've not seen it i'd urge you to check jojo rabbit out we see Thor setting off across the universe to have many adventures with the Guardians of the Galaxy. And I thought the way Ragnarok introduced humour and the way the Guardians of the Galaxy film mix action and comedy so well. Very fun team up made in heaven. Unfortunately, that team up is cut so short. We see them in an initial introductory battle and we're teased with a little bit of banter between star lord and thor such a short scene they part their ways and that's it and they just ended it they just threw it away just like that the film sets up a new villain go the god butcher i was really looking forward to seeing that christian bale fantastic actor the premise of this character has been wronged by the gods they've took everything away from him everything he loved everything he knew everything he cherished all gone and now he set out on a quest to take vengeance on every single god out there and you know when you got a villain that's got a motive it just makes for a excellent excellent character for example thanos he thought he was justified in the actions he was taking he wanted to balance the universe and made for such an interesting character. You know, a villain that thinks they are right is the most dangerous villain. And here we got Gore the God Butcher. He thinks what he's doing is right. He's taking his vengeance out on gods that don't care about people anymore. Gods that don't do anything for anyone anymore. And not only is he taking it out on the gods that have wronged him, but he believes that gods have too much power and are corrupt. So he's going to take out every god out there. And that, for me, made such an excellent premise for a villain. Once again, unfortunately, the film does not take that into its advantage. And it doesn't make use of him enough. It doesn't have him on screen enough. Such a waste of an excellent character. All we're seeing from scene to scene is Taika Waititi trying to make the film into a comedy, into an over-the-top comedy. And in every scene, we're seeing Thor cracking jokes upon jokes upon jokes. And these jokes don't even land. Not for me anyway. Maybe they do for you, but not for me. And in the end... All he has become is a goofball. It's just over the top. It's just too much. In fact, how can I describe it? If you've seen Ghostbusters with Melissa McCarthy and you see Chris Hemsworth in that, where he's basically just a silly character, that's what he is in this. He's a total goofball. He's basically that same character out of Ghostbusters has been pulled out of that film and has been put into this that personality has been put into Thor. I don't know what kind of magic some god has done to get that out and put it in this. But it's ridiculous. And we've seen something like this before. And you know who it is. The Hulk. We saw him get slapped up by Thanos. 
Then every subsequent scene after that, we saw him hiding behind Bruce. And then eventually he just turns into Professor Hulk. They absolutely nerfed that character. I've seen the comeback of Jane Foster, Natalie Portman's character, Thor's love interest from the first two films. She's back in this and she's gained the abilities of Thor. And for me, the way they introduced her in the trailer, she had a bit of a mystique about her, mysteriousness. She doesn't really say anything in the trailer. We just see her landing with Thor's hammer, Molnir, and you're intrigued. But in the actual film, no. Also a character that they've set up to be funny. Fortunately, she has a serious side to her, which absolutely works. The comedy side to her, no. It's probably meant to be the way it is, but really doesn't work at all for me. It doesn't work for the film. Chris Hemsworth, like I said, we know a superb action film actor. Extraction, very good action film. We've got him as the Huntsman in the Snow White film and its sequel. We've got him in Red Dawn. We've got him in 12 Strong, two action films. We've got him in that biopic of Nicky Lauder and James Hunt called Rush, a superb racing film. The guy has worked, he's worked his ass off to make his physique look like a god. Respect to that. Now, I'm sure he's an absolutely hilarious guy, but does that translate well to films? In some films, yes, like I said, Ragnarok. But in other films, no. Ghostbusters, absolutely ridiculous. Thor Love and Thunder, it's not funny, no. It's tiresome. Natalie Portman, the parts where she has to act, she does really well. She has a emotional side to her. You know, she's going through certain things and she puts that emotion across on screen really well. Tessa Thompson as Valkyrie, no. It didn't go down well for me, no. All she's doing, moping around, sulking. Not like in Ragnarok, where she had some badass scenes. She got a few fight scenes in this, but most of the time she's just moping, she's sulking. And, yeah. Anyway, let's move on to something that was at least worth watching, and that is for sure Christian Bale. You know, the Dark Knight series. The Prestige, American Hustle, The Fighter, top tier actor, and seeing him as a villain, I was absolutely looking forward to seeing how he'd portray this character. Yep. What a performance. He is creepy, he is scary, but he is underused. He is excellent as Gore the God Butcher. Fantastic performance by him. I only wish he did more, set his heart and soul into being menacing, menacing with motive, but they still underuse him. I just don't understand. I just don't understand what happened with this film. Russell Crowe as Zeus, character that's got a ridiculous accent making mockery of Europeans. What? And the less said about that, the better. But let's move on swiftly to presentation. It's colorful. It's very colorful. It's very vibrant. The costumes look amazing, detailed. Again, very colorful, just like a comic book film should be. And, you know, the scenes that involve Gore the God Butcher where he seems to suck the life 
out of his environment and those scenes are represented in black and white so just imagine black and white battle scenes with a colorful Thor, colorful uh, Natalie Portman, colorful Valkyrie you know they're fighting this in this black and white area you know it really really contrasty love that a lot you know, just like the film is visually stunning the sound is also superb the dialogue is crisp and clear the special effects the sound effects sorry are nice and clear you can hear things coming from all channels are everywhere and when you got stormbreaker and molnir flying around the screen you can hear the directions it's coming from these shadow monsters when they're emerging from behind you or in front of you everything everything is on point everything sounds superb nothing to complain about in that respect oh and before i move on to uh, giving my score i forgot to mention this part of the film if you don't want spoilers just cover your ears right now but i don't think you can spoil a film that's already ridiculous so we had this love triangle now you'd expect love triangle in a Thor film to involve Thor, Jane Foster and maybe someone else but no, the love triangle listen to this is between Stormbreaker, Thor and Molnir. these mighty weapons godly weapons, Molnir. Stormbreaker, Stormbreaker, you know, he deflected all the power of the Infinity Stones, went right into Thanos' chest. Molnir, come on. Molnir took out a dragon in Ragnarok, bust through him. And what have we come down to? These mighty weapons. In a lover's tiff. Let's wrap this up. We've got a film that's meant to be hilarious. But it isn't. It's goofy. It's silly. It's stupid. It underutilized one of the best actors of our time, Christian Bale. End of Endgame promised us a team up with the Guardians of the Galaxy and Thor. Visually stunning film. Audio great. My score a three out of ten. Totally off the mark. Nowhere near as good as Ragnarok. Ragnarok mixed action and comedy perfectly well. Thor Love and Thunder? No. Not because of the story? No. Gore the God Butcher was excellent. The premise was excellent. But what they did, and what they did wrong for me, was try and make every scene a comedy scene. No. They tried to make Thor into the same character that is in Ghostbusters from 2016? No. Unfortunately, probably the worst film in Marvel's franchise so far. Come on guys, come on Disney, what have you done to this character? You have made him into a total goofball. The film is a parody of Thor. You'd expect something like this to be on Pornhub. I got no words. I'm just out of here. So guys, I'll catch you later on the next one. Yeah!